Now, there's some pretty strange, very unique, different symptoms with a B3 niacin deficiency that you need to know about um, because you might have these. You're dealing with the four Ds. Dermatitis, really bad skin reactions. Diarrhea, dementia. And the fourth one is death. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. But let's go through the subclinical symptoms, okay? And this might shock you. And when we're talking about subclinical, we're talking about not a major deficiency. You're deficient to a certain degree. Number one, you might lose the sense of taste. And number two, um, you might have a metallic taste in your mouth or rancid taste in your mouth. That could be a niacin deficiency. And the good thing about that is just by taking it within a week, that could resolve it depending on how deficient you are. Uh, the next one is a loss of smell. Normally we think about zinc being a deficiency of smell, but it can also be niacin. Or you might have a change in your smell. Things don't smell like they should. Next one is when you're looking in the mirror, your face is moving a little bit, okay? That's pretty wild. It might not necessarily be moving, but it could be changing shapes. When you read a book, you notice that the words and the page tend to move a little bit. When you're walking on the ground, the ground seems to be a little unstable or could be moving a little bit. You may also have fatigue or just the feeling like you can't relax. These are all subclinical niacin deficiencies. Now, the major deficiency is called pellagra. And just so you know, um, to correct these deficiencies, you can't just take the normal RDAs, which is like 20 milligrams. You'd have to take large amounts. And you can take niacin or niacinamide, which is the non-flush version, but you'd probably need amounts like six grams per day. That's a lot, but that's what it takes to correct some of these deficiencies. One big reason why we need niacin is for our mitochondria. It's called NAD. It helps you extract electrons from foods, which is your energy currency. B3 directly is the precursor for this. And also having a sufficient amounts of niacin, you can produce more energy from the food that you eat. You can support something called sirtuins, which is involved in longevity and DNA repair. I mean, if you think about most diseases, they really originate from the mitochondria. In all these degenerative diseases, you're going to see a great deficiency of this NAD, and especially in diseases that are related to aging, okay? Because as you age, your NAD gets less and less and less. Tryptophan can actually turn into niacin. Tryptophan also converts to serotonin and then melatonin for your sleep. But B3 is super important for your skin. I mean, think about what a deficiency will create. Severe, scaly, damaged skin. So it's super beneficial for the skin, for acne, psoriasis. If you take uh, the form of B3 as niacinamide, that can actually help you more with inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, any of the arthritis. But the niacin version greatly helps your lipids, cholesterol, LDL, HDL. It was really, really popular before um, we came out with statins. And of course, now with recent research, uh, we found that no longer has any benefits, right? Well, if someone told me that niacin doesn't do anything, I would ask them, what happens when you become deficient in niacin? And if we take a look at what foods um, are high in uh, B3, you're going to find high levels of B3 in animal meat products, as well as liver, organ meats, but definitely red meat for sure at the top of the list. It's in other foods too, but not to the degree that it's in animal foods. But you can also get it from nutritional yeast. If you're going to get it from nutritional yeast, I would recommend getting it without the added synthetic vitamins that they normally put in there. You can also um, get it from spirulina as well. There's a tremendous amount of research on niacin for cholesterol, the heart, um, and many other conditions. I was surprised on how much research there is on this topic. And even for schizophrenia, depression, uh, bipolar, all sorts of mood disorders. How do we become deficient? Processed foods can create a B3 deficiency. Processed corn, processed grains, wheat, cereal, things like that. The more protein and carbs that you eat, the more the requirement for B3 is going to be because B3 
is intimately involved in helping you um, extract energy out of food. But of course, if you're eating the right foods, you'll have your B3 that's already in these foods versus the refined foods or the ultra processed foods. Uh, pregnancy, being an alcoholic, COVID-19 can increase the demand for B3, therefore explaining a lot of the symptoms with a lack of smell and taste. Yes, it can be a zinc deficiency, but don't forget about niacin. And of course, if you're on medications, a lot of medications, boy, your, your need for B3 goes way up as well. And I think a lot of people uh, might be concerned with the flushing uh, of the niacin. Um, well, you can use the non-flush version um, unless you have a specific problem with um, cholesterol and you want to lower the cholesterol, you need the flushing version. But you can just start off very small and then gradually over time increase it to the point where your body will adapt to the flushing. I personally don't mind the flushing. It's not dangerous, but sometimes people think they're allergic to it. They're not. People take niacin also for a fatty liver. And overall, there are certain things that increase the demand for niacin, like I've talked about, or it could just be you have a deficiency in your uh, diet. Now, since we are on the topic of nutrients, if you have not seen my video on zinc, it's a real popular one, very interesting. You should check that one out as well. I put that up right here. 